But I think on the language, you, you, it, it's fascinating to look at the period and see that when an art form, a new art form, begins to flourish, it moves very rapidly, I think. Like the movement from Haydn to Mozart to Beethoven, it's very rapid. And the movement from Impressionism to Post-Impressionism to Cubism, very rapidly. And cinema starts, and in fact, by the 20s and 30s, they're producing films that in some ways have never been surpassed. So that uh, I think the particular art form of the theatre and of the language used moves enormously fast. And whereas in the 1590s you'll find that the writers could write blank verse, end stopped blank verse, like wallpaper, it just sort of gushed out of them, this was absolutely passé. And there's very little end stopping, and a great deal of the verse. The new, um, the, the, there's a caesura with a full stop, and the new thought starts halfway through the line. So there's this very rapid outpouring of thought. Um, and also the verse becomes more knotted and difficult, and at times it has to be said obscure. And you do wonder, particularly in a theatre like The Globe, how much the bulk of the audience understood some of the stuff. I, I've got an example here from All's Well, uh, where I, uh, at the, uh, in um, 2009, I played the King of France at the National Theatre. And the King of France has a speech in which he is talking about Bertram's father, uh, now dead, whom he, whom he loved and campaigned with. And in the, in the course of the speech, he says about Bertram's father, So, like a courtier, contempt nor bitterness were in his pride or sharpness. Now that's pretty explicable, but you can see how contracted it is that a courtier is supposed to have pride and sharpness, but at the same time he's not allowed to have contempt creeping into it or bitterness. But then the King of France goes on, if they were, his equal had awaked them, and his honour, clock to itself, knew the true minute when exception bid him speak, and at this time his tongue obeyed his hand. And you think, wow, what does that mean, you know? And how is the, the, uh, the globe going to pick that up? Who were below him, he used as creatures of another place, and bowed his eminent top to their low ranks, making them proud of his humility, in their poor praise be humbled. And you think, well, wow, because that's who were below him. Yes, yes, I've got that. I've got the people who were below him. He used as creatures of another place. And you think, well, that sounds very pejorative, as if he's regarding them as a race apart. And, but then, and bowed his eminent top to their low ranks. Oh, I see. Oh, wait, wait a minute, I've got to rethink this. So he isn't d dissing the lower ranks, he's actually saying, I'm bowing to them. Anyway, um, th th those are two particularly difficult sentences which had been included in the text which Marianne Elliott gave to me. And I said to Marianne, do you mind if, I, day one, I said, do you <laughs> mind if I cut these? Because I think there is no way that I can make them despicable. And Marianne looked really surprised as if I've never known an actor on day one to <laughs> say, can I cut eight of my lines? And I said, no, Marianne, I cannot cope with this. Um, but to go on on All's Well and to give you a kind of taste of the greater license that was being allowed almost in plays in the Jacobean period. So not so much in, in I mean, both um, sexually but also politically, the King of France uh, has a speech in which he is really attacking heredity, the hereditary principle, and empty claims of honour. As we know from Falstaff, uh, Shakespeare was very fond of dissing honour, you know, what is honour? A word. Um, but the, the King of France says, Honours thrive when rather from our acts we them derive than our foregoers. The mere words a slave, debauched on every tomb, on every grave, a lying trophy, and as oft is dumb, where dust and damned oblivion is the tomb of honoured bones indeed. Now that's quite difficult stuff, but it's very, very contentious, 
But he's saying here we've got these tombs, some of which are highly ornate and have got um, lettering on them and that kind of thing. This was an honourable man when we know he wasn't. And others are covered in dust and nobody can remember who they were. And in fact, this was of a very honourable person. And I've always thought that these are really quite extraordinary attacks uh, on the aristocracy. I and mean, you wonder uh, whether this was done at court and how well it went down, in fact.